What's going on everybody? It's me your host Bella Wright and welcome to the Occult Gaming Channel. And today we're playing something special for again for the second year straight, the month of FromSoft. And this game is a little sequel to our last uh, month of FromSoft game from last year. This is Lost Kingdoms 2. So I am in for a treat and I believe that you guys are in for a treat as well. Everything I saw about this game looked to be markedly improved over the first one. So let's go ahead and get it started. If you can't tell, I'm super duper excited to be playing this game right now. I'm on a bit of a card game kick. I've been playing a lot of card games ever since uh, Lost Kingdoms last year. Then I played Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories. I bought Fantasy Star Card Revolution. I plan on playing that pretty soon, um, but I'm going to do that after I do a playthrough of Fantasy Star um, episodes one and two for you guys. So as you can see, this is a very similar screen to the first one. This time it's blue instead of red. I think it looks a little better in this game. But we're going to go ahead and watch the opening demo for the game. And um, unlike the first one, this opening demo was kind of, how do you say, unnecessary. And I will let you know what I mean by that. That is the opening cutscene. Oh, well not the opening cutscene, the demo of the game. So you guys will notice that that is going to be very similar to the opening cutscene of the game. <clears throat> so let's just go ahead and get right into it. The setup for this game is very similar to the last game, its predecessor. Uh, we have the same options here. Um, there is a versus mode that seems to be much more robust this time around. And uh, we have the same options here from the last one. So um, the controls are really, there's not much of a difference between the two. One of them uses the uh, control, the camera button, and one of them doesn't use the camera button. <clears throat> so um, the cool thing about this game that you guys will notice it's uh well i already said it but it is like tremendously more improved over the first one so we'll go ahead and get into that pretty soon let's go ahead and get it started that's some pretty sick art right there i think this game probably has even better art than the first one from what i've seen so far i did a um the demo run of the first three levels four levels first four levels didn't get far beyond that though interesting thing about this is she looks just like Kasha from the first game same colors, everything. Well, in our case, her name was Akolsha. But yeah, she looks like a mini me version of Akolsha from the first game. If you guys watched my first playthrough, you guys definitely know what that thing is. Where I should say my playthrough of the first game. Pretty badass. 
So yeah, this is very similar to that demo, right? It's almost like the demo exclusively used shots from this scene here and rearranged them. This is what I like right here. Bam. She does a sick ass backflip. And summons uh, Aldia from Dark Souls too. Sick. What's sick is that they actually use the car mechanics in the cutscene. All right, I gotta get ready to read. For many generations, the land of Argwal has prospered under the enlightened rule of its queens. Mighty armies, ferocious demons, and even ancient gods all bow before the queens of Argwal in their enchanted rune stone. But the lust for power is not easily quenched. Many coveted the queen's rune stone and the power it brought. Eventually, a way was discovered to mass produce rune stones. These new rune stones were not as powerful as the real rune stone, but they did give the users power over lesser monsters. The new rune stones quickly became popular among the elite. Those lucky enough to acquire the expensive stones quickly gained reputation as fearsome warriors. One rune stone master was Terra Grimface. Abandoned by her family and was still a mere child, she trusted no one. She loved only one thing her rune stone. This is the tale of Terra Grimface in the battle for Argwile. Before she took her place alongside Queen Kasha in the pantheon of Arguilian legends, she was merely Terra Grimface, thief, warrior, and member of the Band of the Scorpion. And of course this wouldn't be a FromSoft game without a reference to Berserk. So this is where we get interesting. This is where things get interesting I should say. All right, so looks similar but different, right? Familiar but different. So before I start moving, I'm just gonna go ahead and go into the menu just to show you guys some of the um, some of the menu uh, mechanics and descriptions. So right away we see that things are again similar but different. Um, I'm gonna try to abort right quick to see if I can abort the mission. Looks like we can actually abort the mission. That's interesting. I've actually never done this before. I'm curious about what it does. But anyway, we have level now. I don't believe this was a thing before. Now we have level one, which that makes me think this game is gonna be more like RPG. Um, we have a title there, or job, thief. Um, we have an experience meter, and experience values I should say. That's different, we didn't have that before. We have a stat for gold, which we had before. We have a stat for defense. I believe we had that before, I'm not entirely sure. I think we did. Um, and we have a stat for HP and magic. So beyond that, I see that we have all the uh, attributes at the bottom. Um, and we have, looks like dungeon attributes, which is a bit different, uh, or at least maybe percentages of monsters with those elements. So a cool new feature with this game, there's actually a help button. So if I press Z here, I get this cursor, and they give me all types of descriptions here. So this is very, very helpful if you guys ever need to learn anything about the game. Uh, I paid nearly $100 for this copy of the game, because um, it came with a manual and a case, and they're in pretty good condition. But if you choose to get a cheaper copy of it or if you're playing this on an emulator this game you don't even need the manual the game itself explains everything that you could ever need explained to you um so yeah we get explanations for all this stuff i'm not going to go into it because that'll take a while the game also teaches you about this stuff over time anyway so the cool new thing though that i'll show you guys are a couple of things first off we have transform cards see they're they're their own type we have the first um we have the uh, initial types that we played within the last game including independent types uh helper is a new type uh, let's look at the description for these helper creatures are creatures with some kind of special ability so they're a little bit different weapon cards are back summon cards are back but now we have transform cards 
and uh, helper cards. So with transform cards, you basically transform into the creature you summon with full control over their actions. Unlike summon cards, which only give you, um, you know, um, let you use one of their techniques. In this game, though, with summon cards, you get to use two of their techniques. So I'll show you guys that in a moment, too. We also have a new elemental type beyond the five that were in the last game, including fire, water, earth, wood, and neutral. We also have mech cards, which are similar to neutral in that um, they don't have any weaknesses, but where neutral cards are used offensively, the mech cards will be used defensively. Um, the way they describe it, um, mech creatures have a more powerful defense when facing creatures of one of the other attributes. So yeah, <clears throat> we get the map, the place we're at, and we get the percentages of the monsters in the area. So that's really cool, right? So it gets even deeper than that. We can go into the deck, and just like before, we kind of want to get like a a little um a little view into the cards we'll be using. Um, the cards work the same like they did in the first one. That's not much different. Um, so this one heals if you guys remember the last game. I'm not going to go into the, the description of it just yet. This is an independent type. If you guys remember the last game. Um, it's pretty useless. It's, it's still pretty useless. It's a, I think it's a bit more useful in this game. This thing is always going to be useful. With the horizontal slash attack. And again, you get... Uh, stats here are based on the card and the stats over here are based on the monster like when you're fighting them um man trap is actually not as good in this game as it was in the last one it's been nerfed a little bit from what i can tell um and then we get one of these for free we start with one of these so one of the new things you'll notice is that there's also a level on the monster which that's going to indicate um how much it's going to cost us to use it so that's something we're gonna get into in just a moment. Um, actually, we can go, we can we can look at what it, what that means right quick. The skill level required to use this car. If a car is rated higher than your current level, it will consume twice as many magic points as normal. So yeah, that's gonna be a new mechanic in the game. There are several new mechanics. They really really outdid themselves. So I'm not gonna talk you guys' ear off for too long. I just wanted to show you guys that there's a lot of new stuff going on. So there are items now. There are combos. There's a lot. And then, as you can see down there, there's a lot more statuses going on. There's this page here with with attributes like how good you are at them and immunities and all this stuff down here. We're gonna get into that a little bit later. I just wanted to give you guys a heads up that basically. This is this has been much improved over the first one. So, 13 minutes and we haven't even gotten started. So I I, I do apologize for that. We got all the loot. It's time to get out of here. Fellow Bandit is his name. So now we know that uh, according to our status, thief, and according to the description of that young man, fellow Bandit, we are a bandit. Us as terror are a bandit, and one of the things you'll see now compared to the first one is you can use the cards in a situation where NPCs are around. So it's like a um, fluid connection between the game mechanics, like the battle mechanics, and the exploration. It's all seamless now. There's no there's no battle screens. You just, if there's a monster on the field, you fight it. There's no, it doesn't transition into a battle thing and limit you, limit your movement options. Like, it's just, you can explore everywhere and just summon cards and use them. So we'll see more of that. <clears throat> so I feel like I'm not explaining that properly. Anyway, you do want to go here first to pick up these cards. All right. There's no need to break any of these boxes. I did it before. There's nothing in there. And um, the mechanics have also been fine-tuned a bit. Fairies work the same. They actually work a slightly different. Um, I'll get into that later too. 
So before you had the discard, you could discard cards. Now due to the way battles work, because battles and exploration are seamless, now whenever you discard a card, it just immediately goes to the back of the pile. So when you discard the card the same way, you hold the right trigger and you press the card button. You can discard it. Just like this. Okay. Like I said, it goes to the back of the pile. So you can use it again later. And I also broke these before. There was nothing in them. Okay. So I'm just getting things ready for this. Uh, for what's coming. I didn't take the time to really look at this artwork though. It's pretty creepy. Pretty creepy. Fellow bandit. The boss is waiting for us outside. Rendezvous at the wagon when we've uh, rendezvous at the wagon when you finish off the rest of the enemy. This is a different looking guy. And he has a name actually. Saul. I'll wait here until everyone gets out. Just make sure you take care of the guards at the entrance. Or we'll be here for a long time. Oh, okay, that's what that fairy is. So I did try to hit this before and nothing came of it. So I'm just going to leave that alone. This guy gives you tutorial things. Um, I'm just going to ask him for the tutorial. Ha ha ha, by the gods. I never thought I'd live to see the day when Tara Grimface told a joke. Just go out there and start slinging around those cards of yours like you always do. And we're getting a little explanation. See, simple enough. I'll give you his other um, choice too. Yep, nothing much to it. So you saw a new mechanic there. There's actually a fairy card. There's actually a fairy. You can, you can lock on will lock off to various enemies in this one, so. Okay. So these doors are locked, unfortunately. You can't come back to explore the levels later. And the game pretty much sets that up pretty nicely. Hopefully I get cars back for this one. Nope. Okay. So, because everything is now seamless, um, the only way you can interact with items in the environment is when this pops up. When the exclamation, exclamation mark pops up over your head. Um, otherwise, you'll end up throwing a card out. Because... Um, Interacting with the exclamation things or interacting with items requires you to press the A button. But if you don't see the exclamation mark, you just throw a card out instead. Um, I do want this. I do need it to get a card restored, but I'm not really getting it. So right here, we're going to have a boss fight. I'm going to go for a good grade, but that requires that I don't waste my cards here. I'm going to try not to. And it looks like I am wasting my cards a bit. Come on. I'm not going to get a good grade. I use two cards. When I practice, I got it down to where I only use one, but it took me two hits to kill that uh, that one beaky. Normally, it takes me one. Ah, uh, finally, there you are. Another successful operation for the band of the Scorpion, thanks to you. What did I say? Confound that girl. She won't even accept thanks. 
but no problem, as long as she keeps doing her job. I got four sevens on my, uh, still got a three star. I got four sevens on my um, gigabytes free for recording. I uh, just thought I'd throw that out there. So that guy who was just talking, um, he sounded like a scumbag, but he's, he might actually end up being a scumbag. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but I did end up reading the whole manual. And according to that, um, they have deeper profiles on the characters. Um, according to that, um, he actually ended up, he's the guy who actually ended up taking Tara in and raising her. So he did so um, when she was very young, and Tara feels a very um, strong sense of uh, gra gratitude. I was going to say loyalty, but gratitude is a better word. She feels a strong sense of gratitude towards him. So that cutscene kind of um, doesn't clue you in on their close relationship. But I thought I'd, uh, thought I'd, uh, let you guys know so everything is fairly standard right what's different now is the rating system so uh, it's similar but this but different um, like most things in this game compared to the first one if you remember from the first one the rating system had uh, up to five stars total it had one through five stars you can get if you got five stars you end up getting three three bonus cards at the end of the uh, at the end of the round uh, but this time they simplified it to where each star you get represents the number of cards you're going to receive so before you can get like 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 a four star um, rating and you would get like two cards you could also get like a three star rating and get two cards I think you can get a two star and get one card and a one star and get one card or something like that um, but now they just simplified all that so again each star represents a free card for you I think that works a bit better, but I kind of do miss the five, the five um, star ranks. So I've been matching these three, but I always end up getting duplicates. So I'm gonna try to match the final three at the end here. See what I get. Still get duplicates. So we got Beaker, and we will start reading the profiles now. <clears throat> um, it is a one star. 30 HP, has a pretty good lifespan and pretty good attacks. An independent creature that uses its sharp beak to inflict paralysis upon its enemy, so it can inflict paralysis. As a monster, it is actually weaker than it is when we use it, which is a change of pace, like a, um, a good change of pace. I'm actually glad. Um, in its monster profile, a bizarre creature built around a very sharp beak it has very limited attack range, so unless their victim is surrounded, it's not much of a threat. Um, what I'm laughing at is the fact that it's built around its very sharp beak. Why is it built around its beak? Uh, that's kind of strange. But anyway, we got my boy here, Dark Raven, who used to be um, definitely one of my MVPs at the uh, start of the game, in the first one. It requires one stone, level one, 14 attack, so his attack's been uh, increased because he was he used to do 10 damage before. Um, yeah, just a low, a low damage. Well, a low um, what's the word I'm looking for? A low maintenance card. You don't need much to use this card. You just toss it out and get good results. Weapon type creature, perfectly suited for long range attacks. It causes minimal damage, but it is an ideal weapon for attacking trap monsters that are dangerous to approach in person. That's still the same. As a monster, it's pretty weak. It's much weaker than it is as a weapon. Um, a harbinger of bad luck. The Dark Raven is not much of a threat offensively, but its rapid movements can create confusion amongst the enemy. <clears throat> so I just spent a good nearly 30 minutes just on the opening of the game. I promise this will get faster. There's just so much going on in this game uh, that it is just it's uh, very difficult to just just play. I feel like I have to explain things. And so, um, yeah, if we want to edit our decks, we do it in a much different way from the first one. 
just do like this instead of like adding cards one by one you go in and kind of shuffle them okay there's even more options here there's options everywhere we're going to rename this deck as well just like we did in the first game and this will also be the beginner deck Beginner is usually a hodgepodge, hodgepodge of random cards that we really like. Okay, um, so I'm not gonna end the episode just yet. I'm gonna go ahead and run this back and just show you guys the differences between. Um, that's some good art, and that's gotta be Kendari if you remember the first game. Kendari was that gaudy area so as you can see we start off this time in the boss room we don't start from the very beginning like we would have in the first lost kingdoms we start off basically where we left off and now oh it's a little bit different last time um when i came here there were brand new monsters okay there are brand new monsters and these are the monsters that were in the opening cutscene but now there's not really any grace we got to worry about Basically got my monsters uh, pitted against me. Ow, it's doing a lot of damage. I need to take her out. Speaker going. Okay, I got cards back. And now we're locked on to him. Oh, he really took Beaker out. It's not easy to do. I hear a fairy. I don't see one though. There's a beaker. Enemy beakers. So, Earth is good against them. Um. I don't have many earth monsters. I do have this fairy though. So this is a helper monster, and that's the difference between the fairy now and before. The fairy will now, if she's near me, she restores health. It's not just like a single use card that restores health, she actually has to be near me. So it's very different, very different. Oh. Okay, we got 
cars back. So now, really, there's no way to beat the level. Because we can't advance. Because the, uh, and that's the targeting thing. It's like a little bitty. It's actually called a, um, Lapland Butterfly. But I don't, I haven't gotten to that lore in the, in the game yet. I've only read that in the instruction manual. So, yeah, there's nothing we can actually do to, um, progress. So, yeah. You can come back, but you can't really do much of anything. See, I just wanted to show you guys that. Okay, so we're going to go a little bit longer. Um, I want to show you guys one more thing, so I'm going to save it right quick. Okay, that's good. There's also a catalog. Which, it wasn't, we... There was also in the first one, but the way they arrange it now, they put it in the options, which is a little strange. But anyway, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to see what happens when you quit out of that first mission. I want to check that out. Oops. So yeah, let me know what you guys think of the game so far. Uh, the artwork is super sick. Um, the mechanics are, the mechanics are crazy good. Um, this song is really good too. I like the. Uh, I'm gonna do something with that song. I'm gonna find it and um, use it for something. Okay, so you do go to the map. There's just nothing else here. Okay, so you could like spam train there too. But as you can see, I um, I use two cards. I should have explained that how to get the how to get a good grade here I'll do that right quick just right quick just right quick I'll show you guys how to get a good grade here all right so I always get these cards you don't have to because if you bypass these you can you can assure you're gonna get a good grade so only thing you need is to get a good grade here on this first level because um the first two times I did I got a two star and I figured out how to actually get a good grade. So to get a good grade, all you want to do is you want to keep your car uses to a minimum. And you want to also defeat all the enemies that are here. So you want to defeat these two guys. Sometimes you get critical hits. Gonna want to defeat those two guys and then the boss. You want to, you're gonna want to take as these damage as possible. I don't know what counts as too much damage, but I took like maybe two hits here before. It was still fine. You can really just bait him to doing that spinning attack and then hitting him. But yeah, that's all it requires to get a good grade here. Doesn't take much. I'm going to get the three. Yeah, it's pretty simple. That's a pretty good spread. That's how long it should have took me to do that level. All right, so I just wanted to show you guys that. Um, yeah, the boss isn't that hard either. Oh, that's like a fairy, that's really cool. The boss isn't that hard either. You can um, you can bait out a lot of his attacks. You can just run around him and wait till he does stuff. Um, we're, we're gonna go to the Bashi High Road now, so I'm just gonna go into it. At a certain point, I am gonna stop. Um, that's really cool art too. That's really cool. Those must be um, orphans. Orphans who are taught how to use the cards. So they're gonna teach us some stuff here too. Um, don't worry, I'm not gonna stop everything and uh, force feed you guys knowledge here. 
tell me the truth, you despise us, don't you? You've been with us for years, but you never really tried to become one of us. You think you're too good for us common thieves, right? And when he says years, he means it. She's She's been with them since she was a little girl. His name's Victor. All right, Scorpius, we camp here. You have all done well. You are free to do as you please until our next job. Horses are pretty good looking. Pretty well rendered. We got a new cart, the Porky Pig. There's nothing else to really be done with these horses. And I don't think you can break these either. I really tried, but... The monsters around here aren't all that scary, are they? Alright, and see this is one of those teachable moments I was telling you guys about. Uh, cars are divided into different uh, categories determining how they can be used. Take a look at the icons at the top of the cards. Cards marked with a sword icon are called weapon type cards. A weapon card will launch an attack the instant its button is pressed. Use this type of card when you want an, when you want to attack an enemy directly. The, I guess you can call it the run icon denotes independent type cards. Independent card creatures appear when the card is activated and remain on the battlefield until they expire. Okay, so they taught us how to use two of the cards. Porky Pig being one of them. And notice, um, I haven't used capture mechanics yet. And that's because they are they actually aren't available at the start of the game. Um, you can't just throw out cards to, to capture like you could before. It's completely different. So we picked this up. Let's see what it's about. This is an independent type. Uh, it is fairly strong uh, for what we got so far. It has a lack of defense, but it, it does it does pretty decent damage. 15 is pretty decent. Um, an independent creature, it will not cause a lot of damage, but comes at a very affordable price in magic stones, which is one stone. Um, as a monster, it is fairly weak. Um, it's actually weaker than it is as an independent monster, which again, I appreciate. And lifespan is going to denote how much time it can stay on the field, I believe. Exactly. So I think that is 75 seconds, perhaps. I don't know for sure. A small creature of magic found in the Basha area. When threatened, it will defend itself with sharp spines that grow out of its head. So we're going to do as many battles as we can. We're not going to do all the battles, but we're going to do as many as we can. And this guy is an interesting chap. He's a very interesting chap. As you can see, there is no way for us to actually get over here. But this guy has us do two very interesting things. Hey, Tara. I bet you can't throw a card all the way to the other side of the bank. Uh, if you do it, I'll give you one of my cards. What do you say? Of course. Um, you should be able to toss an independent or helper type cards quite a distance. If you're not a wimp, that is. Note, hold down the cards button and aim with the control stick to send the card where you want it. This technique can be used only when summoning independent and helper type creatures. So, let us use Beaker. There we go. So yeah, you can basically send allies over to far away places. And because he's stuck over there, I can just banish him and take him to the back of the uh, back of the pack. Back of the deck, I should say. Well, I'll be darn. You su you sure do throw a pretty card, Tara. Here's that card I promised. And he gave me an elephant card. Elephants particularly good. You know what? Elephants always been good. Take a look at it. Elephant is level one. Requires four stones. An attack of forty, which is strong. And it looks like it has two special, two attacks, a Z stomp, and sorry, a Earth stomp and a Dual Restore. A summons type creature stomps on the ground, causing shock damage. It can also restore a small number of used cards. So those are the two abilities it has now. So from what I noticed in my short time with the game, each summon card has two abilities instead of just one. And once you summon it, you can actually pick the effect you want uh, with one of two buttons. 
and as a monster it is pretty strong I would say solid health solid defense and very strong attack so we gotta look out for him as a monster the massive tusks of the elephant serve it well in close quarters combat approach with caution so we can't put these in our deck just yet um, you can't do that once you start a level you're locked into the cards you brought with you um, oh it made it all the way over here I'm actually curious to see if see what fighting it over here will be like whoops Whoa. messing up oh that was it cool when you defeat an uh, enemy monster, gems known as magic stones would appear on the screen. Collect magic stones to replenish your supply of magic power. If you find magic stones while your magic reserves are already full, the magic stones will be counted as gold pieces for use in card shops. Okay. Alright, we'll park him for a bit. And I do apologize if my commentary is a little all over the place at the moment. It's been a nice long while since I've done this, and I'm leveling up like crazy. Uh, if none of the cards in your hand seem to be useful, try discarding one or more. To discard a card, use R uh, plus A, B, X, or Y to select the card you want to get rid of. Discarded cards are not going forever, but they do go to the bottom of your deck, so use this function with caution. Okay. So yeah, I think I can calm down on the explanations of things because it looks like they go out of their way to explain quite a few things. So well, this hitbox is much larger. And as you guys can see, I've actually increased by um, my HP has increased by 10. My summoning points have increased by one. So yeah, I am legitimately leveling up here. Like it's not like before where I had to wait to get a um, magic stone to level up. I actually just level up and get um, and get the points as we go instead of like waiting for them to all come at once. What's this guy talking about? The bridge is out. There's no way to get across. It's too bad because that old castle on the other side is supposed to hold some kind of incredible treasure. Oh, I meant to talk to that guy one more time. The other guy. So he tells us something important that clues us in on how we can get across there. So I'm gonna definitely want to talk to him again to get that clear. Ah, oh, screw you. Give me that. Yeah, the summon type card so far, or I should say the independent type card so far, haven't been as good as they were in the first one. Shit, that's not what I wanted to do. Yeah, because I feel Man Eater is nerfed. I feel Man Eater is nerfed so far. Um, and everything else just kind of sucks. So I'm still waiting to get a really good independent type card. Hopefully they have them. But anyway, he's going to clue us in on how to get that over there. They say there are cards that will allow you to transform into monsters. If only you had a card that would turn you into some kind of bird monster. You could fly over there and get that treasure chest. So, that's how we're going to get that. Unfortunately... I don't seem to have been able to get that car on this level, so that's going to be something we probably got to leave and come back to, um, leaving, something we have to leave and pick up and then come back and use, basically. So, yeah. I 
Okay, I really didn't want this episode to go over 45 minutes, but it looks like that is inevitable at this point. Let's see if this guy can take care of things. Please. Please, guys. Please. Yes, yes. Good stuff. They say that the Kandarians have invented a way to create rune stones. If I had a rune stone of my own, I bet I'd be able to control monsters too. So if you say this, uh, you hurt his feelings pretty bad. I'm just gonna go with the yes, cause I don't wanna hear his mouth. You think so? I knew it. If, uh, if they just weren't so expensive. Even if I use every gold piece I'd ever stolen, I'd be lucky to get a rune stone strong enough to control a lousy ant. A fancy one like yours? I could never afford that, not in a hundred years. cards you can carry at one time is 30. These 30 cards are known as your deck. Once a card in your deck is used up completely, it cannot be used again in the same mission. So use your cards carefully. If you run a card as well in a mission, you will have to select a board from the menu. This allows you to start over from the beginning with a fresh mission, um, from the beginning of a mission with a fresh deck of cards. To open the menu, press start. Press the start button. why they tell me that? None of my cards died. That was all them. They got annihilated. 187, I told you guys, I was just playing Dark Side or Dark Souls today and 187 popped up. I'm telling you guys, my daily numbers are strong. Very, very strong. If you're going to Kadishu, this is the road to take. Be careful, Terra. I think I saw Storm Hagen over there. Storm Hagen near there. Told you that my daily numbers are strong. I'm gonna sh I'm gonna share the uh, meaning of 187 as well. Um, shit, I, I wasn't reading this. Um, however, if you acquire new cards while on the mission, you can add them to your to your deck from a deck point. This is this is an example of a deck point. Deck points are not just for adding new cards to your deck. They can also re um, they can also be used to replenish your hit points. So sorry about that. Um, if you can, just go ahead and pause the first sentence of that. And give it a read. I was thinking about my daily numbers as that was as I was scrolling through that. Eleven eleven is another one, which is my magic right there. Eleven eleven is a good one. I like the eleven eleven. All right. can add these cards here to the deck and I'm going to do just that for Storm Hagen we really need this guy this is the main guy we need um, I'm not going to worry about the grade too much though here I don't think unless we really screw the pooch which I don't think we should do I think we should be fine and Red Lizard, let's take a look at him right quick. We can't look at the catalog from here. Okay, Red Lizard. Pretty strong. I think he's much stronger than his cousin here. Yep, six points. It's fire type, three star requirement. Um, 
weapon type creature it does a small amount of damage but it will not expose the player uh, it will not expose the player from any attack when used from any attack I guess from its attacks it doesn't expose the player it requires minimal magic stone consumption a close cousin of the lizard man in view with the fire attribute the lightning quick attack of the red lizards dual scimitars leaves no opening for counter attack as a monster it looks to be a problem absolute problem let me see what he said one more time about kidashu kadishu the east is basha to the north is kadishu if you guys remember before in the first game basha was the first kingdom to fall to the black fog um and yeah it was to the southeast of alanja if you're going to Kadishu, this is the road to take. Be careful, Terra. I think I saw Stormhaven. Okay, Stormhaven. Every monster and creature has one of six attributes. Fire, water, earth, wood, mech, and neutral. Or neutral. Uh, water has an advantage over fire. Similarly, earth beats water, wood beats earth, and fire beats wood. For example, if you were fighting a Stormhaven wood, you might want to use a hop level car or fire to improve your chances. You can tell from the attribute of the cards from the icon on the side of the card. For monsters, the icon is shown next to the hit point gauge. These guys throw their fucking axes. You gotta be careful. him with fire attacks. You know, this works for me. Should be a good grade. Yes. Um, this time we're gonna go middle. Uh, that's fine. Cool, we got Storm Hagen. It's the first time getting it. Wood summons it has Mad Storm and Boomerang Axe. A green ogre that favors an oversized axe. It relies on brute strength to defeat its opponents. A green ogre with a big axe, more agile than one might give an ogre credit for. He's pretty strong. Um, yeah, the only thing I don't like is you don't see the cards that you didn't get. I wish that was still the thing. The only thing that they didn't improve was keep the same. Okay, guys, this episode went on far too long. I do appreciate you guys for uh, being patient with me as I over-explained everything. But, um, yeah, I think the episodes after this should be a lot faster. So, appreciate you guys for watching. I want you guys to take care. Till next time, guys. Peace.